So thank you all for joining me today. My name is Michael Smith, the National Consumer Education Manager of Genome Canada. And again, I'm here with the lovely Tanya Denier, our Parts and Notions Coordinator. And we are going to present to you another Genome's awesome accessory countdown. Now, if you were with us last week, we have done, number one was our ribbon and uh, ribbon sewing guide. You can go back to the Genomi HQ IGTV icon. It's a little TV with antenna icon that's on our Genomi HQ Instagram page to review that ribbon sewing guide. These uh, Instagram lives will eventually be posted on our Genomi HQ YouTube channel. I am still waiting for some uh, kind of special permission to what I would like to do with our videos. Uh, so as soon as I get to the, um, hopefully go ahead on that, I will post these videos. Uh, and then if the answer is no, then I'll post the videos and not do what I wanted to do. But I wanted to do something special for these videos, so that's why they're taking a while. But again, you can go to Genomi HQ uh, TV icon, the IGTV icon on the Genome HQ Instagram page to watch these past episodes. So that was number one. Number two was the free motion coaching foot set. That's a lot of fun. Number three was our serger beading foot and the two cording feet. So that was fun to attach a, a bunch of um, you know, pearls and beads, some yarns, and then with the cording feet, uh, you can even make your own wired ribbon. So that's very fun. And Tanya's beautiful drawings, they're so cute. So today, boom, number four is going to be our quilt binder attachment. And now that is a very fun tool. I've used it for so many times. Uh, a number of people say, oh yeah, I have it and it's in my drawer. They're too afraid to use it. So I hope to, or again, they're curious about it and they're um, wondering, you know, should they invest in it? So I hope to give you some tips and tricks and take uh, some of the fear out of using it. I also want to, ooh, sorry, share with you, uh, Tanya has just made this other cute drawing called Share the Genomi Love. So we have a new hashtag. So you can go to hashtag share the Genomi Love. And this is where you can post pictures using some of your Genomi feet and accessories and attachments that I've talked about in the previous Genomi HQ uh, Instagram series, the A to Z with Genomi. Those are all videos on the Genomi HQ YouTube channel. So you can go back to review as those. And then again, anything that you've made with those feet or the attachments that I've mentioned, you can go to hashtag share the Genomi love and then let us see pictures of what you've been working on. So that's very fabulous and very proudly Canadian too. <laughs> So yes, today I'm going to talk about the quilt binder attachment. And what is that? It allows you, this is a little placemat I've made, it allows you to sew on your binding. It folds over the raw edges and sews on your binding all in one step. So it's super fast, super easy. Uh, yes, mitering the corners can be a little... Um, tricky. So again, I'm going to talk about that, but again, very uh, simple and easy. I call this down and dirty quilting when you've got all these UFOs. And again, you've got placemats, table runners. This is, could be like a little um, wall hanging, uh, doing our uh, demonstrating our AccuStitch software, but again, very quick and easy. Let's get a ooh, close up on that miter. Look at that. Ooh, <laughs> I thought that was really good too. So again, if you takes practice like everything else, but the straightaways, how simple and easy is that? That again, folds it over and stitches it down all in one step. Now you could use a straight stitch as I typically will use, but you can also use some decorative stitches. Any of the stitches in your machine, a serpentine stitch, for example, would work out perfectly fine too. And again, not just uh, table runners, placemats, that's always a good way to start. Don't start with a king size quilt. Start with something smaller, more manageable, and then this is a, a lap size quilt. 
And if you're concerned about your miters in the beginning, I always love using like scrappy binding, but if you're worried about, you know, your miters may not line up so wonderful or your stitching, um, you know, maybe a little more obvious, maybe not so accurate. Uh, I like then using a scrappy binding, but then I like to try to match my binding, the majority of my binding uh, fabrics, uh, the colors with my backing fabric. So that way from the back, you don't see the, uh, some of those imperfections as much. <laughs> you know, same with your free motion quilting as well. If it's not so great and wonderful, do a, um, a, a darker uh, backing uh, with a print as well, and that hides some of those imperfections while you're learning. So again, it's very fun to do. Like everything else, practice, practice, practice. <laughs> so yes, so here is the quilt binder. Now there is quite a few of them. Ooh, and where you can find more information, jump on to our Janome global site. So type in your browser, Janome global site, and that is the English translated version of the Janome Japan website. And on the left-hand side, there is a tab that says bulletins, and you'll click on that, and then you can scroll down. This is one from 2010, so again, 10 years old, but they had this fabulous quilt binder attachment. So you can find more about quilt binder, through the bulletins on the Janome global site. Of course, as always, check with your fabulous Janome dealer. Now those bulletins, uh, I used to put in a little binder like this. I would print them out and put them in page protectors. And just today, now that I'm back at the office, instead of this little red binder, you know, it's red for Janome, uh, now I finally put them in this bigger binder that just coincidentally says Janome. But yeah, so now I have my big bulletins binder and I even put in some tabs so I can easily find them. So I love uh, suggesting that you print out these bullets bulletins. So it's like a reference binder. So even if you're sewing, you know, late at night and the dealer is closed and you can't reach out for some uh, information, you've got that at your fingertips for a lot of the fabulous uh, Janome products. Also our accessories guide, if you go on to Janome Canada or even Janome.com, wherever you are in the world, uh, go to the main Janome site in your country and then uh, you probably have an accessories tab on that website. And you click accessories and then here is our bilingual, since we're in Canada, it's a bilingual um, accessories guide and you can find out more information about the quilt binder for your machine in the Janome Accessories Guide on the Janome, in this case, Janome Canada website. And more information, the Presser Foot Workbook, I mentioned a number of times in the Janome HQ A to Z with Janome series. And the Presser Foot Workbook is a lot of how-tos, a lot of little exercises, how to use a bunch of the Janome uh, presser feet. Some come with the machine. There's a whole uh, addendum that has the specialty pressure feed, a number of them, which I've talked about through Janome A to Z, or A to Z with Janome. And as well, I'm talking about some of those specialty pressure feet and attachments here in the new series of jo Janome's Awesome Accessory Countdown. Now there is a special addendum that you would purchase then separately. So you purchase the press report workbook first, and then you can buy um, various addendums. And one is for the Cover Pro uh, accessories. But look, there's a tape binder, a binding attachment that you can use with your Cover Pro machine. So there's more information about the, the quilt binder attachment in this addendum for the Cover Hem machine. So it's great to have. So yes, lots of information. So here we go. So the quilt binder set comes in a blister pack. Now, because I'm using the Memorycraft uh, 9850 today, cute little machine, it is a embroidery and sewing combo machine, but it's a nine millimeters and it has the easy set bobbin that's printed on my um, uh, card here. So I need a nine millimeter, which is nice and highlighted in red. So, and then it's also an easy set bobbin. So I know this is the right one for my machine. Oh, yes. Um, somebody wants to know if you can use a double layer binding with the quilt binder. A, so double, a double layer. So like we would traditionally do, 
you know, how we do it when we make our wine. Oh, your French fold? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would not use, you don't need to use that method of binding with your quilt binder, which I will get into in just a minute. Uh, yes, so your easy set bobbin is, it refers to, there's this little thread cutter that's down on your um, needle plate. So here is the regular bobbin cover, and the easy set model refers to if you've got this thread cutter off to the side. So that's the easy set model. And that's important to know because when I take off my little bobbin cover here, and the quilt binder attachment, again, that comes in the blister pack, these are the two main components. And on the base plate here, the back of the base plate, is my bobbin cover, basically. So when I put the two on top of each other there, I know, yes, this is the correct uh, base plate for my easy set model here. So this, I'm going to take off my bobbin cover and put it aside so I don't lose it. And then I'm going to put this base plate down in place of where that uh, bobbin cover was. Now that's important to know because of which machine you have because this is a blister pack for example for the same binder but it's got a different base plate for different models of machines. So I just put here um, on the back of it the 4120 for example uh, one of the QDC machines. This model of uh, quilt binder attachment will fit on um, other uh, types of uh, machines because if I take my easy set bobbin cover and I put it down on that base plate, well, it's, it's too small. This base plate here, the bobbin cover is bigger. It's more rectangular. So then this base plate is not going to work in my easy set model and then my easy set model isn't going to work in this case in the 4120, for example. So that's why, again, always check with your Janome dealer or, again, go on the Janome um, Canada website to look at the accessories guide to make sure you get the correct um, parts number for your machine. So that's very important. Uh, even you'll see they do come with even little feet. There is, oops. A, this is the foot for the seven millimeter machine, and then there is the foot for the nine millimeter machine. Now, if you watched our A to Z with Janome series, W was the binding foot, and this foot that comes with the quilt binder attachment is the W1 foot. So I think that's very cool. Again, all the Janome feet are um, lettered, so they're easily identifiable. So here's the foot that comes with the machine, and again, full instructions on how to use all of this or with the attachment. <laughs> Full instructions are in the blister pack as always, so I could use this foot if I wanted to, but in this case I'm, I'm not going to. You can use basically whatever foot you want. So there is another binding attachment though. This is where again you've got to consult again your dealer and the uh, accessories guide and everything because as I mentioned, there is uh, binding attachments for the Cover Pro machine, our Cover Hem machine. So again, it says wide tape binder, Cover Pro models, three needles. So that would be our CPX um, 1000 and our CPX 2000. So this quilt binder, again, is the same for, for this portion of it, but the base plate is the biggest thing that's different. This will fit on the Cover Pro machine. There is no way this is going to fit down on our sewing machines. So again, we need to make sure that we get the correct uh, binder. Yes, exactly. The correct tool for the correct job for the correct machine. So that's for the Cover Pro. But then they also, you know, Janome is all about options. So they offer this this cover or this quilt binder that comes in the blister pack uh, finishes at a half inch wide binding, but there is a separate blister pack with just this part of the quilt binder that finishes uh, smaller than a half of an inch. So you could get this. Um, portion of it to fit on this base plate. So you can sort of mix and match a little bit is what I'm trying to get at. So again, more information um, from your Janome dealer for sure, because then we also 
have a slightly smaller uh, quilt binder as well than this is for, again, the, the Cover Pro, uh, this would finish at about 3 8 of an inch. But I could then purchase this and take this portion of the binder and put it on that base plate so I could get smaller uh, binding. So again, you can kind of mix and match a little bit. This binder set that comes in the blister pack, again, uh, finishes at about half of an inch. And you fold it out like that. Now this is a little bit like those bias tape makers. And again, like our W foot, the binding foot, it's very similar in that you start with your wide strip of fabric and then it folds in the raw edges and then folds the strip in half to finish it all in one step. So I'm first going to attach the base plate onto the little hole that's in the needle plate with the big screw that comes with the attachment and I'm going to anchor that in place. And then there's also these two little screws that come and I'm just going to not totally tighten these. I'm just going to have them in loose because then I can adjust this binder where I need to. Now over here on the fabulous tape stand, which comes in a blister pack, and uh, again on the back of the blister pack are instructions uh, using the tape stand. Here they show it with the Cover Pro machines, the Cover Hem machines, but I use this tape stand all the time when I'm doing binding because um, it's even unwrapped itself a little bit, of course, um, that I have my binding all wrapped up and I, of course, wrap it just around a pencil. So here's your big strip of binding wrapped around a pencil, even better if they say Janome. And then I take this and plop it on my tape stand. If you have a really big, and then there is it sitting on this disc, if you have a really big roll of binding, then I say, oh, just take a scratch CD and put it down on the tape stand first and then put your binding on top of it. So then uh, if the roll is really, really big, so that's like a little tip. So oh, totally. Yes, it's amazing. <laughs> so for this uh, quilt binder attachment that I'm demoing here, it starts with about a two inch wide strip of fabric and the full instructions are on the back of the blister pack and they open up to more and more like look at all those instructions and what i love is that they're drawings as well so you really understand exactly what they're saying so definitely read the instructions and save that the plastic portion of the um, uh, blister pack throw away but then this cardboard guide you want to definitely save so the instructions say, again, cut your two inch wide strip of fabric. And this is where it's going to be totally unlike our French fold way of binding, typical way of binding. Now, normally uh, we're used to then folding our strip in half and we would sew down like a quarter of an inch and then we would flip this over and flip it over and then maybe top stitch it down or sew it down by hand but I have a great visual I thought would be easier for you guys to see. <laughs> uh, so here is my two inch wide strip of fabric. And what the quilt binder is going to do is fold in the back side. It's gonna fold in the, the top side or fold in the left side, fold in the right side, and then it's gonna fold it in the middle. So what we end up with is a half inch wide strip of binding and it's all beautifully finished. The raw edges are folded basically into the center and then the strip is folded in half. So this is uh, what allows us to then fold it and stitch it down all in one step. So that's where the big time saver really comes in. So I want to then take the strip of binding. Now in this case I'm using um, solid fabric so it's it, you can't really tell what's the right and wrong side you would want to roll your binding strip so then the wrong side is facing you the right side is going to face like the back of the machine so that's how you would put that um, again a around your pencil and onto your tape stand now I'm just going to use a straight stitch but again you can use uh, whatever kind of decorative stitch you'd like to use too and then you're just going to curl this around. I have a question. Yes. Somebody asked if 
when the binding is finished, is the back the same size as the front? It is. Now, when well, well, I guess that's something you can adjust in your instructions, for example. They do say, they, they, the instructions say to have it the same size, so then your top is exactly on the bottom. Now they say it's incorrect to have your top of your binding to be a more narrow width than the underside of your binding. But if that's the look you want, I'd say go ahead and do it. <laughs> you know, you could do whatever you wish, but the instructions say to balance it out. So when you're doing your tape binder, for example, I do lots and lots of samples. And then this is where you're adjusting for your, not only that the front and back are on top of each other, according to the instructions, but then also you're experimenting with your stitch. And then if your machine has where you can move your needle either closer to that fold or maybe further away, and this is where if you're going to use a decorative stitch, you would do all of this experimenting first just on these um, strips of fabric. And then with this, I think, oh, well, after this, this is not going to go to waste. This could be maybe like a ponytail tie or this could be um, a tie around like an apron or a tie around like a, a chair pad, you know, something like that. Uh, a tie back for a curtain, you know, why, why waste it, you know, but... Um, yeah, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but like there, for example, you can see perhaps the backside of the fabric is poking out a little more than the than the top side. So then in this case, that's about maybe an inch or an eighth of an inch from my stitching to the, the top side of the uh, binding. And then on the back side, the stitching is a little further away. So again, it really depends on what look you would like. But um, according to the instructions, the correct way is to have the top and the bottom exactly uh, on top of each other. So that way, they're a consistent distance. Uh, your stitching line is a consistent distance away from the, the top and the bottom or at the top of the bottom. So yes, once I have this through my, I'm just going to, well, I'm going to do that again, uh, put this through the accordion folds here, whoops, like that. And then again, the wrong side is facing me. Now you can um, trim off this edge a, uh, at an angle if it's easier to put through the binder, but this is just thin cotton quilting fabric, so I found I didn't really need to do that, but I love using my stiletto or a pin or your seam ripper to bring it through, and then you're going to bring it through the mouth of the binder and under your foot. And now I know because it is... Um, Yes, we'll get some light on this subject. Uh, I know because it's black, it may be a little hard to see, but then here it's already folded. There's the raw edge of the bottom of the strip. There's the raw edge of the top edge of the strip. And you adjust these little finger guides of where that strip is going to end. You adjust it by adjusting these two screws here. One is for the top little... Um, gauge there and then this one is for the bottom gauge there are these little fingers that stop um, the uh, strip and then you know this is what um, lets you have it so the strip meets where the the top is over the bottom so you would adjust it through those screws there and then you can also adjust your plate here that's why i didn't tighten up these all the way because i want to have this under my foot so it's close to the, my needle is close to the edge, but this is where I can move my needle over if I need to as well, depending on your machine. So sorry, my hand is in the way, but once I get this all lined up on where you want it to go, um, I will do that. What stitch did I use? No. I think I just, I think I just did a regular, uh, Straight stitch? yeah, I think I just left it at the there. And then again, you can adjust this wherever you want. So I'm just going to put that down a little bit more. Now the foot I'm using is the convertible free motion 
or sorry, the convertible even feed foot. It does not come with the 9850, but it's a wonderful foot to use if your machine has the um, Accu, uh, AccuFeed Flex foot, that, that's a great foot to use uh, as well. So the convertible even feed foot, this in itself could be a Janome awesome accessory because it's really cool. So it comes in a blister pack like this and then there's one for the high shank models, which the 9850 is, but there's also one for the uh, low shank models as well. So again, double check uh, with your dealer which machine you have. But there is a, our even feed foot, but what makes it convertible is if you squeeze the foot and then the the feet come off. So there's like the, the regular one that's slightly like closed toe or there's an open toe version. And then it comes with these cool little guides that you can slip in. And then this one would be right in the center of the foot so it would be like a um, the stitch in the ditch foot because there's like a little rudder there so then that would be great or it's got this other little guide that you would take this out and put this one in and then this could be your quilting guide depending on how far you want to quilt away so i thought that was very fun to use so I love being here at the office because then I've got access to all this kind of stuff that I can play around with. So again, you decide on where you want this um, to end up and then you, or where you want your binding strip to end up under your foot. And then you tighten in your screws. And then, yes, I'm gonna go into my adjustments here and I'm going to move my needle over. And it's up to you where you would like it to move. So I'll just move it over there. That's. I could move it over a little bit closer. I like leaving it about an eighth of an inch from the edge, but again, that's personal preference. It's whatever you prefer as well. And then now that I think that's good where I want it to go, I'm just gonna do some practice stitching. And then I can double check and see then are the, the two edges gonna line up uh, one on top of the other I'm using this beautiful, as I can go through here, I'm using this beautiful Katana, uh, Madeira Katana uh, multicolor thread, uh, which is up here. Uh, I've got all these beautiful colors. So again, if you're using black binding, maybe you want to use black thread, or maybe you want to see another beautiful element and you can use some cool thread. So again, I just double check. I'm just gonna cut this off and see, okay, does that you know, look of the way I want to? Is my line of stitching close to the edge like I want it? Then yes, okay. So then away we go. Throw it over your head like Oh, it's true, I should, my patron saint. <laughs> so when I do this, and again, I always say, um, when you're practicing, so this is like this little sandwich I did when I was doing ruler quilting, for example. So again, why waste this little sandwich as I'm practicing? Then I'm gonna practice doing my uh, corners. So again, uh, don't waste anything. Just try to um, use up all your scraps uh, with your little quilt sandwich of your backing, your batting, and your top. And I'm just gonna do a corner so I can practice mit mitering the corners. And I will explain what all these little thread tails are for in a minute. And again, we always suggest do your set of placemats. If this were, you know, four placemats and that you would make uh, typically, and then by the time you do each corner, you know, that's 16 corners that you're going around to make sure that, um, you, you know, you're, you can refine your miters a little better. So it's very fun. Uh, again, you're not investing in a whole king size quilt or anything. So I was going to start back at, I have a multi-purpose sample here. I was going to start at this corner. Yes. Okay. So when I'm ready to start, you want to raise your needle. So when you're ready to start your quilt and you've got, I'll just pull this out a little more and I'll cut off that previous line of stitching. So yes, then you want to pull your strip through a little bit, leave yourself a tail in the end, but you want to go over here to your strip and see, especially if you pieced your binding together, I like to unroll and see, oh, do I have a joint in my binding anytime 
soon where I'm going to get up to my corner. So I'm going to gauge on where I'm going to start on my the side of my quilt or my placemat, for example, depends on where I have a, a joint in my binding. I'm, I'm going to try to size it up that I don't end up with a joint in the, in the miter. It definitely makes it a little trickier. So I think I'll be good here and not get a miter or a, not get a joint of my binding near that miter. So I can just roll back my strip very conveniently. And then I'm just gonna start because here is my, my uh, strip is already folded and I'm just gonna put this as my quilt and I'm just gonna put it through the mouth of that binder on an angle to get it started. And then make sure it ooh, stays under the foot how you would like it. And again, you could use any foot with this um, binder attachment. Uh, it could be the foot that comes included, or again, use your walking foot or your AccuFeed flex foot or your convertible even feed foot. Is there a question? Oh, yes. Can you use the binding attachment with a circle? So if you're doing something like a circle placemat, Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And in fact, if you had a, uh, the, a curves, instead of mitering the corner, round off your corner. And then that way you don't have to worry about oh. mitering the corner, <laughs> round it off. Uh, for curves, uh, if, if you were to round this corner off, for example, around a curve or, or yes, for a circular placemat, let's say, you definitely want to use a bias strip. This is just straight of the grain cut strip, but if you're going to, again, go around a curve of any kind, uh, you'll want to cut this two inch wide strip on the bias so it'll go around more easily. So, oh yes, you're very welcome. That's a great question. So as I go along, again, the straight, uh, the straightaways is definitely where you're going to really make up time. It's just so easy where, again, it's already stitching and folding it all in at once. Now miters, yes, will take a little bit more time, but the more you do it, the, the faster and easier it gets. Now, unlike your traditional French fold binding where we're gonna stop, typically again, a quarter of an inch or whatever our seam allowance width is, we will generally stop sewing that seam allowance distance from the edge. But with our quilt binder attachment, we are going to sew right to the edge of the quilt. So I like going nice and slow. It's okay if you're maybe one or two stitches away from your corner. You definitely don't want to go beyond the edge of that quilt because that's going to affect your, your miter. So I'll go boom and I'm right on the edge, like right along that edge. So then I'm going to raise my needle. I'm not going to use my thread cutter, which is a, a hard habit to break, but I'm going to raise my needle and I'm going to raise my foot and I'm going to slide this whole uh, strip of binding through my foot, through the mouth of the opening there, and then take it back as far as you need to comfortably work on it. Uh, this might even be helpful if you stand up, for example, and then get back to, and I pull it out generally um, eight inches, 10 inches, something like that. I like leaving the carriage on the back of our embroidery combo machines like the 15,000 and the S9. And then this again is the 9850 because then I've got a little bit more work surface here if I don't have my machine, you know, recessed down in a table. So I pull it out as far as I need to, and then I'm going to drop my foot that anchors that strip in there and take, um, either use your fingers. I'll just swing it around so you can see it a little better here and use your fingers, or I've got one of these bamboo point turners, a little wooden iron, something like that. And I'm just going to crease the fold. So there's my binding strip already going along beautiful. And you can see it's already like folded because it's already been through the mouth of the, the binder. It's already folded in those raw edges. So now I'm just going to make a crease on that fold. I still have my bobbin thread is the white. My top is that beautiful multicolor katana thread. So now I'm going to clip those 
and hang up my thread on our um, thread cutter there at the side of the machine is a good place to hang up your thread tails. And then these uh, thread tails, I want to just hang up off to the side. I like using these little clips. So there's my um, white bobbin, there's my katana needle thread, and I'm just gonna clip them off to the side out of the way. Now, as I bring this over, I hope you'll be able to see, looking down on it, and again, it takes me longer, it's more complicated to explain it than it is to actually do it. So I hope I'm not losing anyone here. Um, perhaps you can see that crease mark uh, right in my binding strip. Hopefully you can see that crease mark that I made. And then you'll even see like there, the miter is starting to form. It's, it's going off at an angle on the, the back side. It's going off at an angle on the, on the right side, the top side. And that, the reason I wanted to make that crease is I'm gonna push that crease right down along the edge of my quilt here. And this is why you don't want to do your stitching over the edge of that quilt. If you do, the, the miter will be a little trickier to do. So once I know I've got that fold right on the edge of my quilt, and I just fold this down, can you see that, that miter there? Yep. Yes, no one look at my terrible manicure. <laughs> and there is the... Um, miter at the back so again you can refine your miter you know spend as long as you need to to refine it but once i'm happy with that now the instructions uh, you can go to Janome canada's youtube channel and there is a video that uh, linda our former educator and liz did many years ago um, on the quilt binder and they use pins to put this uh, in. And in fact, the instructions in your blister pack say to use two pins to hold down your miter. I love using tape. Now, preferably I would use the embroidery tape. That's like a low tack tape, uh, very easy to remove. I don't have any of that with me here, but I'm just using regular cellophane tape, uh, just a little bit. And again, you're not gonna dull your needle or anything um, sewing through just that little bit of tape. But I like using the tape because that really holds my miter down and I don't have to worry about pins. So after I do my miter, then I'm going to put my quilt back through uh, this binding. So I need to raise my foot and then I bring the binding through back. I tug on it gently but I'm bringing the, that binding strip back through the opening. And then I'm also gonna work in my quilt top into the, the jaw of the binder. And you can, again, refine it as much as you need to, oops, to keep that folded. And sometimes I rock back and forth to, to get the binding back through the binder attachment and to make sure it stays folded over. And then again, you won't have the pressure of doing this live <laughs> under time constraints. You can take as long as you need to to get it. And again, the more you do it, the, the quicker it gets. Uh, but yeah, so you're gonna rock that back and forth through and make sure this all gets ooh, neat. And then once you get it back through, I think I will need to refine this a little more, but I'm not gonna take the time. Uh, then you wanna get it back to where you originally started. So there I'm back on my miter. I'm gonna drop my needle. Now the reason I liked uh, having those threads with that little clip is then this allows me, if I've got uh, thicker layers here, this allows me to, to grab on those threads and I can help pull my uh, strip of binding through. And it seems it's a little folded there, so I'll try to correct that. And again, you can just refine it a little more as you need. So then, yes, now I know I've got my corner started. I'm gonna grab on my thread tails and then away I go. And again, the straightaway is really where ooh, you're gonna make up time. 
Uh, now, overall, this strip just feeds in very easily, and especially when you've got your binding strip on your tape stand over here. But do watch every once in a while just to make sure your strip isn't like folding down uh, onto itself. But overall, you really don't need to babysit your strip that much. So I'll just get a little closer here because then I'll show you what I typically do for the end. So I'll just stop there. So now the moment of truth. So I go back to my corners and then I take like my stiletto or the seam ripper and then I just want to pull off the um, tape. Now typically when I'm doing binding I also lengthen my stitch. I like uh, sewing at a 3 instead of a 2.4. I go to a 3. So then I rip that off. So of course, because it's live, I see, oh, I had a little bit of the backside of my strip didn't fold under. But, and even there, let's say, you know, there's, there's no secrets here. <laughs> First of all, let's look at that miter. So right there on that miter, is that not a beautiful miter? I say that's a beautiful miter. Now, again, would I typically do this for a quilt for like CQA or Houston International Quilt Festival? Well, no, because this doesn't fit with their judging requirements. Again, I call this kind of quilting down and dirty where you just want to get it done, uh, but still certainly looks very beautiful. Um, but yes, I say the miter looks great. You know, my line of stitching, beautiful. I like leaving these long thread tails as well because it's a personal preference, but I like sewing up the miters. Um, if you don't, fine, you don't have to at all. Uh, I would use a locking stitch then when you start in um, your new line of stitching. I just started because I know I'm going to thread a, a hand sewing needle and sew up that miter. Um, but if you weren't going to sew them up, then yeah, you'd want to do a locking stitch or a reverse or even a shorter stitch, shorten your stitch length and then lengthen it as you go along to secure those ends. But also too, I like leaving, now in this case, the miter on the back too. I mean, I, I say that's beautiful. My stitches line up beautifully here in the corner. Uh, but let's say if they didn't, or even here, this little bit of the strip wasn't completely folded under, but I can totally fudge it and I can just tuck it under. And then with a, again, hand sewing needle and it would take literally like five seconds just to fold that edge under. And then I would either put in a little bit of a fusible web and not even have to sew it at all, or I would just sew up that little bit so I know that that raw edge then is is secured it's not going to flip out but that way i can totally um fudge it and nobody would have to know that oh it was slightly off or again mainly in the if the miter was slightly off this is why i like these thread tails as well because i could refine it a little more using my um, hand sewing needle but overall i'd say that's beautiful now, when I come to doing the ends, there's many ways to finish off this binding. This is just a way I like doing, again, quick and simple to do, unlike our French fold way. <laughs> um, but you can see here, especially with this beautiful um, katana uh, multicolor thread, here is a serpentine stitch. So again, a little bit more forgiving perhaps than a uh, straight line of stitching because um, you know your eye is more likely to follow that straight line of stitching if it's off a little bit, whereas this uh, serpentine stitch can be off and you don't really notice it. So whatever kind of stitch you want to use. So if I've, I've done my whole quilt, I'm all the way back to where I began. So what I like to do is cut off this strip at a slight angle just to distribute some of that bulk. And I throw that bit away. Again, I should have thrown it over my shoulder like Eleanor. Yes. So what I like to do, and again, it's like so scientific, you could measure this, but I generally go, okay, how far, or I'll do it this way so you can see, how far is, am I from like the, uh, from the needle to the edge of my strip? Oh, I'm that far. So then I kind of do that. Oh, that's about that far. Again, you could take a, a measuring, uh, you know, a ruler or whatever and, and uh, figure out how much this distance is of where I'm going to cut off this strip. But I just literally will do that and then I'll do that. Okay, I'm going to cut my strip somewhere off here. So then I will just cut it. Sandra says decorative stitches do hide some sewing deviations. Yes, absolutely, Sandra. That is definitely a great uh, tip. 
So yes, then I'm going to cut this. So first I cut it off straight, then I'm going to cut it off at an angle. And again, I love, you know, tape or glue. This is fabric glue. Cheryl Ann Paul says, Michael, you're doing a great job. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, it's more complicated. I, I always like to be thorough when I'm describing things because I, I don't want to miss a step and I don't want anyone, you know, there's so many questions around it. So I want to be thorough. So then you, you've you all got the understanding of it, uh, but then I don't want to make it so complicated where you think, oh no, that's too complicated. I don't want to do it. It really is good. And again, it, for things like now finishing the strip, everybody's got their own way of doing it. Uh, I cut it off at an angle and I use a little bit of fabric glue that again, it's not going to come up my needle. And I do that because I'm going to fold over that raw edge now. So it's going to finish off the edge of that strip. Is that like you did in the paper over here? Yes, absolutely. Perfect. Thank you for prompting me. <laughs> Again, I've got a visual aid that might be more easy for you guys to see. So here is my two inch wide strip of binding. And again, I've cut it off at a, at a straight first, uh, so my, my whole big strip is now gone, it's free. But then I cut it at an angle, and then I'm going to put my bit of uh, fabric glue, and I'm gonna fold over that edge, whatever it is, I certainly don't measure it. <laughs> uh, and then you'll see it sticks up a little bit up here. So I'm actually gonna trim that flush with the edge of the binding. So I need to get in there and trim that. But then when I, I, I know that this top edge is gonna fold as my binding strip is made. So it's gonna stick out here. So I need to trim that off so it's flush with that fold that I made earlier. And then this again is gonna fold up there and there, and then my quilt's going to be there, but I'm going to have that nicely finished uh, edge so I don't have to worry about raw edges. So yeah, so I've already done that, and then I'm just going to trim that off at an, ooh, at an angle. So then I know whether it's going to flip over and it's not going to stick out. So as I'm about to come over, and basically I'm just going to overlap this a little bit with the strip I've already done. And the reason I cut it on an angle is that, again, it distributes some of that bulk. So it's not going to be so much right in one spot. So it's kind of like as we typically join our binding strips, you know, on a 45 degree angle. So it's, it's very much akin to that, but it's a little quicker and, and easier. So this way I just watch it go through my binder and just to make sure like that edge doesn't flip back. Uh, but that's why I like the glue so it stays there. And then if I needed to use my um, stiletto or something, I could go in there to poke it and make sure like it's gonna be fine. And yes, it's gonna be fine. So then, now I am gonna overlap a little bit of where my first uh, row of uh, binding was. If you were concerned, oh, it's gonna overlap a little more than you wanted, well, you could go back and rip this little bit out as well. So then there isn't as much of an overlap. Sandra wants to know if you hand sew the angled edge after you're done. I, I do, uh, again, it's a personal preference if you want to. So there, now I know that my strip is gonna come over my previous um, uh, row of binding. So I could remove that previous row of binding uh, if I wanted to, but I'm just you know, gonna stitch right over it. And then I see, oh, it's coming right out the edge. And then again, I've got my little stiletto here. So if I see a little bit of my raw edge poking through, I just tuck it into play. And then away I go. And then when I know I'm, I'm clear, then yes. Now I, again, will raise my needle and pull it through. Yes, and then now I could use like the side cutters here. So yeah, that's, again, it's a personal preference, but I would then use these uh, longer threads here to sew up that, to sew up that, um, yeah, that little edge there. But that way, again, you see that it's that edge is folded under, so it's uh, nothing is going to raw. Uh, there's no raw edge there. Nothing is going to ravel. 
So there. So it's, a, again, quick and easy way to do it. There's many ways, but that way, um, again, it's not so bulky right on that, uh, that edge. So yes, oh my gosh, was that everything? I think so. Okay, oh, fantastic, uh, for the microphone. So yes, thank you for all your fabulous questions. That's wonderful. I hope you will all run out and contact your Janome dealer. Now, depending on where you are, um, we're here in Ontario and a number of our dealers have uh, opened up. Many are still doing um, shopping by appointment. So you you know wear a mask, there, you might be the only one in the store or they might be like one or two other people uh, as well. So you could keep your social distance. But I know uh, others are still doing uh, like curbside pickup, for example. So you could say, hey, I need that quilt binder, easy set model, I'll be over to pick it up and then boom, they bring it to the door and away you go. So uh, definitely reach out to your dealers and um, make sure again, you get the correct quilt binder for your sewing machine or your uh, cover hem machine. If you've got one of our CPX uh, cover pro machines. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. It's certainly my pleasure. And then, yes, if I can go back to our uh, Janome's Awesome Accessory Countdown was uh, brought to you by the number four, if I can find it easily. Oh, fantastic. Four for our quilt binder attachment. And that's excellent news. So thank you so much for joining me, everyone. I'll, oh, and as a heads up too, um, I hope again you'll forgive me this Friday. I am not able to do the Janome HQ Instagram Live, so I hope that's going to be okay. Uh, tomorrow, make sure that you all jump on to Janome Canada Instagram Live. Amanda is going to be doing, ooh, the quilt block advisor for the M7. So she will show you how you can make a quilt, and then now you know how to bind it with your quilt binder set. So yes, I, I won't see you on Friday, but I will see you all next Monday as we do number five for Janome's Awesome okay, Accessory bye. Countdown. Oh yes, and Tanya says goodbye. So thank you all for joining me. Have a fabulous day. Thank you. Mm -hmm.